It's home to some of the most violent people in our society. The predators, the felons, they've committed terrible crimes. And they have to be watched nearly every minute, double teamed when they move, because they can turn on you in an instant. Like this vicious attack, when as many as 30 inmates kicked, punched, pummeled seven corrections officers in Florence's Max Security Central Unit. Pull that one. And that's why when Fox 10 photographer Eric Corrales and I became the first news crew to enter this unit in nearly a decade, we go. were fit with stab vests. Are you worried about your safety first and foremost? Uh, on this yard, it's a level five yard, so we have not the average criminal here. We're here to document a day in the life of an Arizona corrections officer. One of the most dangerous jobs in our state. West side, the first week I was scared. You know, the first the first time the gates closed, and you hear the smash behind you, you're like, oh God, I'm in prison. Our guide is Officer Cody, who's been on the job for three years. From what we saw, his day consists mostly of moving inmates, searching inmates, searching their cells, confiscating contraband, and keeping himself out of harm's way, which has to be job one because the men housed here can be unpredictable and show no mercy towards each other or corrections officers. It seems like one of the biggest challenges would be you're dealing with people who don't necessarily think like other people do. Yeah. I mean, these men have done some bad things. Yes, so we know they have short fuses. We know they have anger problems. Some, some even have mental problems. And they are all housed here in Florence Prison's historic central unit. The prison's gray concrete walls rise high into the air. They're topped with razor wire. And then on top of that, an electric fence that will deliver a fatal shock to any escapee. And inside these walls, the men have nothing but time to think of ways to hurt each other and the officers. I've seen weapons made out of everything, you know, like tray what? lids. Uh, what, out of what? Yeah. Uh, tray lids, um, paper, uh, cellophane wrap, you know, over my And that's why there are random pat downs like this one throughout the yard. Some inmates are considered so dangerous they're not allowed to walk free even behind these concrete walls. What we're looking at here is a series of 10 by 10 wreck cages. Uh, these are men who haven't proven themselves uh, trustworthy enough to be out with the general population just yet. So they take this step and after a certain period of time, they can be with other inmates. And this is where we get a first hand look at how quickly the mood of inmates can change. When we first arrive, they try to engage us. That's that whole story. 23 years in the business. Yeah. Are you seeing you guys fight? Oh, he looks bigger on TV. But when I asked if one of them wanted to talk with us on camera, the mood quickly turned. I'm told if the leader of the group turns, the entire group tends to follow. And that's a real danger here. So it's time to leave this area. Yeah, I think it's good for us not to stay in one place too long. That's probably the key. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they build up fast. Yeah. One of those men is named Richard Coffey. He's considered such a risk that before he can leave his cell, he has to strip down. Right. And Officer Cody inspects his unclothed body while he's still behind a locked cell door. Open your mouth, open your cheeks, all right? Let me see uh, your armpits. All right, go ahead and push, go them up. All right, turn around. Once he's cleared, Coffey is cut. And as with all inmates classified the way he is, two officers at a time have to hold his arms as he's escorted to where he needs to go. What's your interaction like with the corrections officers? Um, it's, it's, for me, it's fine. Um, I respect them. They respect me as a man. As a, it's, it's just a two-way street. As long as I get that respect back, I get the same respect. Then I don't act crazy. So act crazy, I stay here longer which I don't want. Let me put you over there in the middle of those guys. Coffee's being brought to a classroom where he's working on changing his violent behavior. There you go. He has to graduate from this class before he can be let out of his cell and interact with other prisoners here, out in the main yard. We'll walk over here. And as we approach, an inmate barks out a warning to his fellow inmate. Who are the yard? The most privileged here in Max get two and a half hours in the yard, three days a week. You're just looking for one-on-one -on -one problems, you know, this guy's talking to this guy, it looks like he's getting violent, and you just keep an eye on them. Uh, for the most part, they handle all their own problems. Being on the yard, I can't help but notice we are vastly outnumbered. <sighs> but if they wanted to, there could be 50 inmates on top of each of us before backup arrives. The officers in the yard carry only pepper spray and stun guns. The only real protection, the gunmen up in the surrounding towers. This guy up here is your ultimate backup yes. when you're on the yard. He's our eyes, he's our ears, he, uh, he's everything really. When you think about all their challenges, maybe it's not surprising that the Department of Corrections is short on corrections officers. 
and not dozens of them, hundreds. Just in this unit alone, the deputy warden advises that he's 60 officers down. Um, Complex-wide, it's more than that, and statewide, it's you know well over 500. And the state is hiring. These officers are a vital line of defense between hardened criminals and your loved ones. And now you know what their day is like.